Um, before we get started, though, I did want to say a few words about Beyond Baroque. Um, first, I'd, begin, I'd like to begin by acknowledging Beyond Baroque's presence on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Gabrielina Tongva peoples. We acknowledge the wrong done to these peoples through settler colonialism, genocidal practices, and the violent dispossession of their land. And as an arts organization, we are committed to uplifting indigenous writers and communities. Um, as for Beyond Baroque's history, uh, you know, for 50, 54 years, we have been a space and a community dedicated to the artistic possibilities of language. We nurture writers uh, and artists. Uh, we have writing workshops, readings, performances, art exhibitions, multimedia performances. Uh, we've got a bookstore, a gallery, of course, uh, an archive that documents the history of uh, small press literature for the past 50 years. Almost every weekend of the year, we have events right here in this theater. Um, I really hope to come back to check out um, some of what we have coming up. Just tomorrow, we have, uh, we're collaborating with the LA Poet Society to host uh, the inaugural, their inaugural Queer, Queer Writers Festival. Uh, the interaction as part of that uh, should be really fun, so come back tomorrow. After that, we'll be on a little bit of break for, uh, summer break for about a week, two weeks, um, and then we'll have some programming later in July and August, uh, including readings with Pam Wards, uh, Jim Cushing, uh, we'll have Performance in August with the great Gabriel Seville. Um, so, really looking forward to that. So, please do check out our website, numberbook.org, to learn more about it. Um, and, you know, hope to see you over the course of the summer. Um, we can't do that without the support of our community. Um, so, we always do like to ask uh, if you're so inclined, please do consider becoming a member of Beyond the Rope. Uh, we've kept our events free since the, we were open um, earlier this year. We'd like to continue doing so. So purchasing a membership helps us do that. Cost as little as fifty dollars uh, for individual membership, seventy-five dollars for dual membership. Uh, you don't have to charge. You usually get it for free if you are a member. Um, so really appreciate your support. Um, but really, this has been uh, this is a space, uh, as I said, for writers and artists. It's nurtured generations of poets and writers. Um, and you know, I have to say that uh, this prior to the pandemic, I sat down with a bunch of uh, sort of leaders of other similar organizations from around the country had lunch could be uh, and conversation was you know what's your favorite part of the job and you know a lot of answers working with communities with writers and I had to be honest and said and I hope this doesn't offend anybody that a lot of people I know love this audience but this is my favorite part of the job has always been sharing an office with Bill Alexander he's <laughs> our, poet, our poet residence for a long time um, and he's written an extraordinary body of work here in this building. You know, we've worked together on accounts programs. Um, and I think most meaningfully for me, uh, we should get to talk every day, or at least part of the pandemic we did. Um, and he is one of uh, the world's great writers. Um, and I think he's a true inspiration throughout what have been some very, very difficult times um, politically over the past any number of years. For me personally, um, for lots of for the world itself, I think, and for our community. And um, he's an inspiration, and I think really one of the most meaningful people to work with because this utter commitment to um, both to his art, um, but to his art as a collaborative process, um, for the, willing, the willingness to draw other people into really a profound meditation on language and the recognition that language is a communal activity and that it's through the transformation of language that we can in fact transform um, what is really a, a very dark and terrible history um, that we uh, continually find ourselves enmeshed in. And so it's for that reason that I'm particularly excited about this program because this is uh, this is a program about Will, um, but about his collaborations with some other truly brilliant artists, uh, particularly Byron. I think you can see the, the fruits of their labor upstairs, but also uh, you know, his collaborations with Harold and Carlos, um, which is which is just one of the many many collaborations he's done over the years with a, a wide range of folks. Um, so, you know, without further ado, I think we should get to the program. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of a reading with Will, as I said, in conversation. I'll introduce Byron and, and Harold and Carlos uh, after Will reads. I should tell you a little more formally about Will. Um, writer, artist, philosopher, and pianist, Will Alexander was born in Los Angeles, 1948, and has remained a lifelong resident of the city. He earned a BA in English and creative writing from the University of California. Uh, Los Angeles in 1972. His books include Across the Vapor Gulf, Compression and Purity, The Combustion Cycle, 
in the stratospheric canticles, is taught at many colleges and universities, including Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics, the University of California, Hofstra University, amongst others. His collection, Singing Magnetic, Magnetic Hoofbeat, Essays, Prose, Text, Interviews, and a Lecture, was awarded the American Book Award. His poet, poet residence here at Beyond the Road, he has curated programming that included readings, workshops, and authors' conversations. And um, very significantly, his most recent collection, Refractive Africa, by Lay of the Forgotten, was a finalist for the 2022 Pul Pulitzer Prize in Poetry. He's going to be reading from Refractive Africa tonight. So please welcome Will Alexander. Thank you, Quentin, for that generous introduction. I want to thank all of you for constellating here this evening. I'm going to read a little bit, and well, not very long, but from the section on the Congo. This, this, this book, Refractive Africa, is a constellation of works that include things, work, a work, a long work on uh, Emma Stutuola and the great uh, Madagascan poet, Jean Joseph Robbie Rivello, who a lot of people unfortunately don't know, but they should. Had a kind of electric kind of understanding of the way that the imagination works vertically, not horizontally. And they seem these these works seem to come out of the dream state, but this work for me came out of almost like a dream condensation. Like when I wrote this book, it just seemed to come to me, like under Breton's ideas about automatic process. It was coming to me not out of theory, but out of actual praxis. So I'm going to read from the uh, Congo, and um, we'll we'll just do a few pages, and then we'll maybe circulate around the painting, and and, and leave it at that, and let the, the mind sink into itself, circulate with itself. We don't want to put too much quantity on the on the process. <laughs> So in the poem's over 50 pages, so I'm not going to indulge myself. Nor do you guys want to hear get bored with this. So I'm going to just do the first half dozen pages or so, and we'll go from there. And we can also, we'll, we'll be talking later with the panel. But uh, I'll start. As a Kashik Sangana, I peer into the Congo as transpersonal witness, as incisively faceted tiger, squirming, having the powers of a shark, via forces that sculpt the lenticular as lightning, perhaps a telepathic wakefulness, perhaps magisterial conjuration, creating migrational litmus in my blood, thereby knowing the dangerous template that is the Congo. Blood infected, day's conundrum, horrific with grandeur, solemnly lit by rainy episodes of lightning. Thus, duplicitous tragedy, innate with microcentric suffering, its stressful indictment, its tertiary woundings, its camps, its darkened glossolalia, at the height of bloody moonrise. As far as auric markings, I am never plagued by micro tessellation, by extended physical armament, as if under siege, listening to dysfunctional scallops. This being none other than spectral conflict consulted by looming sentiment, the palpitating candles to broken cellular infernos. Thus we exist as phantom cobalt and tin, as blind psychic enumeration that issue from itinerant conundrums, creating in our minds complex physical scale, thereby creating Earth's archeology. span Wayward Christian voids, being none other than spreading micro-infection that attempts at weakening the stability of the soul, this being attempted annihilation that parallels the triplicate component of the spirit 
mind and body. As a Kashi freed man, I am able to peer through and beyond the pitch of European corrosion and its attendant psychic confusion that occludes itself via the pole of matter, via the dialectic that begins to feign itself through properties that events mechanism as upgrade so that it kills and scatters all indigenous subtext. In order for indigenous power to ascend beyond abstruse delimitation, we must, we must decipher printed reams concerning post-colonial dossiers on Christ. This remaining our charred psychic vicinity, co-woven with implanted prevarication. With its slotted spinning and verbs, not unlike moist Shombe and the Kabilas, having sired and kept alive, tenacious psychophysical noise as ragged, as modular drones sent to root out our sense, all the while concocting a sun that descends and rises on obverse slaughter fields, where nausea perfects its phantoms on earth where all of our corpses are publicly conveyed. Crowned by a garland of visits wrapped around our skulls, not unlike an enemy's awash amidst scorpions, the Europeans seeing us less higher than our tortured cells, issuing from the mouths of lions. Therefore, our bodies remain sans value via generic monetary climate, far beneath the micro scale of American nickels and quarters. Because I'm able to dart across invisible ravine, I am akin to stunned equations. I remain the incumbent Sangoma who foretells the state of birth and rebirth via galaxy after galaxy, as if I were a living turquoise formulation. Say I morphed into an isolate peccary or a fermented lion living context, sans living content text. I could not dimensionally, dimensionally inspire European projection as too perfect with evil. I always revivify its abstracted menace, its negligible claim to reason, all the while possessing corrosive heavenly yield that arises from a blank foundation that founders via its own belief, via its understated fatigue held by bygone direction vis-a-vis -vis the waters of the cosmos, via innavigable bells, never singed by living electrical law that concurs with itself via transparency. As what a dazed electrical griffin, I particularly explore invisible solar forts on Mimus and Saturn, or psychic echo missions across galactic volcanic vicinity. So as freedmen, as Akashic grammatical instant, I'm able to freely roll through and beyond glass as perpetual holding pattern, accompanied by the interior spirit of vitreous owls. Through perhaps sigil as sudden predatory vapor, as proto-segment, as contradictory ash magically fallen from heaven. So from this height, I see the Congo as proto-condensation prior to incarcerated mass having pre-celestial, being pre-celestial in nature as sporulation from the cosmos as if we were pre-inhabited, a pre-inhabited galaxy conversant as a Remnant of Mars and Sango, Edwama, Ubange, and Gur. Yet we remain compelled to ruminate on dire consequence as fate that the Occident has inspired in us.
dominant with blinding, providing facility for a profound self abnegation as principle, not unlike a poisoned astral summons that baffles light, that baffles psychic coriander, that maims connection to higher elucidation, forcing us to turn to extrinsic cancellation, that is Christ, that we have been forced to abandon alchemical stress points, condoning spontaneous divinity. So as to worship instead the heresy of a carpenter as used Euro-colonial template, as image compelled according to lateral cunning, as absurdity carried to unimaginable lengths, as a body cast across a cross, a seductive spell for our existential ruin. All the while casting seductive optical haze, presenting heaven at the expense of that which is truly hidden. With its rays that self felt themselves via static corruption that remains alchemical fission. The latter, our motif, concerns a higher migration beyond the isolate parameter that is, that is matter and all that this solution, isolation implies, prone as it is to matter, sends its isolation from measured barrenness by Greek, by ionized kindling, by measured trope, falsely paraded, as vehicular idea, as unsubstantiated cyclical speculation, understanding that my torrent is nameless and impartial with burning, as if stealing a horse or riding a barbarous mule, barbarous insular mule. As Congolese, we are rife with need for liberty as we routinely starve on fractions on electrical plasmas rooted in poisonous ciphers. Starvation being language of imposed design as if our bodies were newly smelted by Europe as newly erected blood meal, as vehicular cattle partially eaten by bats, by spectacular anaconda, anaconda. So we feed on bush meat and vermin on plates of lice and strangled predators. So many existence cannot be buried in the American prerogative that prevails concerning the slice of life. The Congo being manufactured breathing infection ruled by the infernal scattered by sudden predatory forms marked by gruel from insubstantial tyrants via Belgium and the Potomac. This being our world fueled by plutonium leakage, by barbaric ozone drills and indigenous organics subsumed, um, subsumed under the moniker of error. The Congo, sullied by dishonesty, by absence of diaphaneity, as if we resemble fetid oyster larvae. This being tragedy descended upon dark and gold infants plagued from birth by mounting infections, by wrath from surging sea sea flies who gorged on dead cobras. I'm speaking of hunger here and not of an intellectual constant that measures greed against graft, all the while consumed by notions of Socratic poverty, always summoning hunger from the gut, being referenced to endemic starvation, in contradistinction, one thinks of scholars with tightly measured radial skulls, carking and active with numbers, trying to convince our indigenous instinct that only know the depth of the Congo River that it, it conveys to itself, that it conveys to us the deepest depth of any river in the world. They will tell us that it crosses the equator twice, that it vomits its monstrous fauna, that it burns at points as a waterfall of knives, 
that elucidates beauty as feral osmosis as unlit trepidation, blazing on earth as blinding dilemma. Yet we know by spontaneous intake, its stunning magnification, knowing, knowing its anacondas that snap like cobras, that its waters are seemingly borderless, that it exudes magnification as planetary, planetary nutrient on a grammar of scale that simply glistens in spirals. Yet despite the magnificence of the above, our human number remains submitted as it persisted as motion circa 1955. For instance, we remain the offspring of minerals such as tin and coulson, yet at the approach of our hundred million citizen derided purchase continues to rage, to can burn with insistence that overpowers the grave. Yet our collective victims view stark attrition from the unknown, as if knowing that totality, totalitarian funds remain statistically affirming to common pistols and machetes, as if China and the Occident invoked no claim concerning the prematurity with its coffins, Thus, our sweltering souls, according to infectious concussion. This is the Congo, meticulous with derangement, with its foul and delimited psyche, with its weaver bird nest, with its sprawling grasslands, with its ghostly voltage as flares from old oil rigs. Thus, our, intell our intelligence forcibly blunted, our thought stream and injured as culpable integument with this compound negation, terror persists, staking its way through interior suppression. This being the ruthless yield from the Congo, the carnivorous pole paws of old Leopold and his henchmen. This has sparked the intensity of all known corruption with its slow moving bot fly symbolic of prehensile snakes. Perhaps we partake into account that remains the Ministry of Migration in Kinshasa with its concessions concerning thievery ill-formed by daily microaggressions by which the populace remains stifled and hesitates and self-confronts as poisoned solar referent vilified as annihilated shorebirds, our population is equated with nothing, with a windowless temperature of absence, always perturbed, always sleepless in a hammock of veins, subjected to post-mortem charting as well as by bribery and destitution, so all ledgers remain pre-inscribed with ruin. I think we'll leave it at that, I don't wanna keep reading. It gets into a drone that I think we can continue on for some time, but we don't want to obtrude the whole evening. And uh, I'd like to uh, leave it at that point, but I'd like to invite 